And honestly, guys, if that's how you feel, it's how you feel. But I'm not trying to be rude when I say that music might be for you, but having a career in it is absolutely not the right path for you. What's going on, guys? Adam Ivey, sellmusic.com, here to help you go further, faster in your music career by sharing proven marketing techniques and strategies that are gonna help you transform that passion for making music into a legitimate business that's gonna provide you with freedom and fulfillment, two of the most important things in life in general. Now, this is an epidemic of sorts that I've been kind of scooting around the subject for a while, so I hope that this brings you value and doesn't discourage you or offend you. Uh, I think you should bear with me till the end because I think there's gonna be a lot of things in this that you need to hear. If you're a recording artist, if you are a rapper, if you're a singer, songwriter, even a producer, this is something that you might deal with, this is something that you may have already gotten through and discovered, or this is something that has made you quit and you're watching this video because you're thinking about getting back into it. And that's the entitlement complex. That's the uh, lack of wherewithal. That's the lack of commitment to what you wanna do. So many times I talk to people and they're recording artists, yet they are afraid to perform in front of anyone. They are rappers, they are recording artists, they're singers, they're producers, yet they've only done a couple things in the last five years. Why? Well, you tell me. Now, the thing is, when you get to this point where you know what you're capable of, you feel like you should have these opportunities, you feel entitled, and I don't really mean that as like a, a curse word in this video, but in general, you've done this work and you feel like you should be in the big leagues. And now that's not how it works. At this point, you need to kind of stop what you're doing and turn up the volume. Now, I'm not talking about the physical volume or the audio volume, I'm talking about the volume of work and practice in which you're putting in. Let me put it this way. So there's a, uh, not a theory, but there's an old wives tale. There's an old story that I, I got a lot of value from a long time ago and I wanna share it with you right now and I'll get through it as fast as I can. So an art teacher in a pottery class separated their class into two different groups. One group for the entire year or the entire quarter, whatever, was responsible for making one perfect pot. One perfect pot, that's all they had to do. Each student had to make one perfect pot for the entire length of the class that year. The other students were to make as many pots as they possibly could before the class was over for that period of time. Now in that period of time, let's just say for example, sake, it's a year. You know, the group that was responsible for making perfect pots did their best, they made some beautiful pots, but when in comparison at the end of that year to the, to the side of the group that was doing as many as they could, none of the perfect pots could beat the pots in the quantity group. And I'm gonna tell you why. You know, that metaphor, that story, has a point, and that point is you get better with repetition, a lot better than trying to perfect one thing. Now, when you first get started as a recording artist, anything music-based, anything in life, it could be woodworking, it could be working on cars, it could be fitness, you're gonna suck at first. If you cannot bear to live with that, then music's probably not for you. Let me say that again, because I stumble, stumbled. Music is probably not for you if you think that you're gonna be great right out the gate. Now, there's another thing that we romanticize when it comes to making music. And it's, that's gonna be the best work ever. That's gonna be our Quincy Jones thriller. That's going to be the Josh Groban, you lift me up. That's gonna be your one hit wonder. That's gonna be it. That's gonna set you off. That's gonna put you to where you need to be. That's gonna be your big break. And I tell you that because so many people email me with a link to their music, not even introducing themselves saying, this is my song. I've been working on this. And the one thing that I want to make sure you guys translate in this video is that no matter how much time you put into a piece of music, no matter how much money you put into a video or a photo shoot or PR, or you hire one of these Instagram promotion companies, don't do that. It doesn't matter. The world does not give two shits whether you shot a video on an iPhone or if you got some guy with a red $30,000 camera, uh, and I'm not talking about the physical color red, visual color red, I'm talking about the brand, and those who are nerds like me know what I'm talking about. What I'm getting about, what I'm getting at, let me, let me start over and reset. What I'm getting at is quantity is going to make you better. Quantity isn't always better than quality, but the quantity will get you to quality. So many of you work on a video and you're so proud of it, and, and I know how that feels when you're proud of a video, when you're proud of a song, when it makes you feel a certain sort of way, and then you don't do the marketing correctly and it falls flat and you try to breathe air into it, you're doing CPR on it, you're giving it the Heimlich, you're giving it mouth to mouth, trying to resuscitate it for six months, a year, two years. And I say that because I've seen artists, I've seen producers pushing the same work for six months, pushing the same work for a year and a half, two years. And on rare occasion, of course, that does work. 
On rare occasion, you could release a, uh, a body of work such as an album, an EP, and then maybe something that you released two years ago gets new life, gets new breath into it. And then all of a sudden it takes off, S such as Fetty Wap, his first single, he pushed that thing for like two years if I remember the story correctly. Now that might not be you because seldomly it does work. Seldomly it works like that. Labels are signing more artists than ever before because they have nothing to lose because the one or two that hit are gonna make up for the 10 that flop. I don't want you guys to be the 10 that flop. You guys have to be able to put out that music and have that career. So many recording artists and performers and, and rappers, when they have music, they have this bigger than life, this larger than life persona and ego. But if you tell them to perform, I bet you that at least 40 to 50% are gonna be too bashful and too shy to spit anything for you, to start singing. Those that have a passion for it, those that have the confidence, know that practice makes perfect. Know that their voice hasn't always been that great, or maybe they know that it's not great now, but through that practice, it's going to get better. It's the same as eating one salad doesn't make you skinny, no different than one protein shake doesn't make you buff. Making one song, good for you. Make 50 more. This is the thing on YouTube, so many times people are like, I've done 10 videos and I'm not getting any traction, Adam. How do I get to 1,000 subscribers so I can get a custom vanity URL? Well, unfortunately, people have to give a shit about your content before you're doing all the actions that, go, that come after that. Does that make sense? Let me know in the comments below. I want you guys to understand that one video is not going to make you great. 10 videos, you're probably still gonna suck. In fact, I think it took me probably about 50 videos on my YouTube channel before I felt confident just talking to the lens and not looking up at the screen, which is about this high up over the camera that I reference. I'll, I will look at it just so you guys know what it would look like. If I was talking to the screen the whole time just to see what I look like and be super self-absorbed and super self-conscious, it wouldn't look like I'm talking to you because I'm not making eye contact. Now, when you're making a music career, and when I say making a music career, I'm really talking about developing it because you're not gonna have it day one. You could have a career without any, ever making any money if that's all you did. It's part of your career, it's part of your life. You know, I recently did a, um, a few months ago, I did a podcast with my good buddies. I have it up on my channel a few, few videos back where I said that I don't believe in a work-life balance. I believe it's all one thing, right? When you're doing what you love, when you're doing what you know you need to do, goes in everything else. No different than brushing your teeth, taking a shower, eating. And I want you guys to get familiar with that because if you think that you're gonna take off after two videos, if you think that magically you're gonna get put on after spending $4,000 for this video that is unbelievable, that's not reality. It might be for the 0.0001% that got lucky or they're an industry plant or whatever, and I'm not gonna get into that in this video, but it's not gonna be for you and I. We as music creators need to hone our craft, but not only that, each individual piece of music, each individual piece of content is like a beacon where people can discover us. It's like a flare that we shoot up in the sky. If you're on a deserted island and you do one flare up in the sky, how likely is it that somebody's gonna magically find you? But if you're sitting there all day and you have this, this, these flares within you to be shooting up in the sky, bomb, 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 and you just keep doing that over and over and over again, you're bound to be found, you're bound to be discovered. And that's what we all wanna do, not only by a record label, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about an audience, an actual group of people that actually care about what we're doing. So if you think that you're gonna be perfect at first, no, you're gonna suck. Embrace the suck. Embrace the, the work that it's gonna to take to get to where you wanna be. Use what you have now to get to where you wanna be. You know, I have the quote, doesn't matter where you start, as long as you get started. Doesn't matter how many jelly beans will fit in the jar, as long as you're putting one in at a time because eventually it'll fill and you'll be at where you wanna be. I am so far from where I wanna be in my career, in my life, and that's a whole different video. Side note, wait, I'm gonna do this without looking. Oh, that's skill, ladies and gentlemen. That's what you get for shooting a shit ton of videos just like this. I want you guys to tell me in the comments below, not just a one sentence, I want this to be a little bit longer. Tell me in the comments below how you found your consistency. If you lack consistency, if you lack that follow through, that determination, if you get easily discouraged, I want you guys to be vulnerable with this video and let me know what holds you back. Let me know what you're self-conscious about. Let me know what you're vulnerable about. I know how it feels to spend a ton of money on a video and then it flop. I know what it feels like to spend a ton of money on some gear and then you realize, wow, that didn't make me any more inspired, that didn't really improve my quality, that didn't really 
make me any better than I was with the cheaper piece of gear because we all fall into it as we progress. I have owned several different keyboards. These are just MIDI controllers. Well, actually I got a Juno D, which I absolutely love, but I've had motifs, I've had Korgs, I've had, you know, you name it. And they didn't help me be any more productive. I was just spending money hoping to be inspired. Now I say that because when you're making music, there's not gonna be going around the corner and then magically it just hits you. You gotta have it within you and you gotta know your why. You gotta understand why you're doing things. If you have all the music inside you and you wanna do it for a career, then you're gonna to have to keep cranking it out. And I'm not saying be cheap, I'm not saying rushed, but there's gonna be a point where you just have to be really, really efficient and really, really good at what you do. You can't become a craft master, a uh, 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 music smith of sorts without putting in the work. Look at Rick Rubin, look at Quincy Jones. These guys weren't great at first, they learned. Everyone who has a big time story has an origin story as well of where they came from. And that's something that you have to think about as your origin story today. This is what we're developing. These stories, these stresses, these frustrations are going to make the victories even more sweet. So I want you guys to know that obviously this isn't some type of magical marketing video. I have some of those in the pipeline, but I just wanted you to know that you're not alone when it comes to sucking. Even if you could be doing it for five years and still suck. I get on my computer sometimes and I still suck. If I got on my guitar, actually it's not in here right now. If I got on my guitar, you guys would see how bad I suck at that, but then I could jump on the keys and I'm not half bad. This is what you guys really have to embrace. Understanding that you've got to turn up the volume if you want to be heard. Anyway, guys, let me know if you've turned up the volume in the comments below. I want you guys to now click on this video, sorry, click on this video, because I think this is gonna really ramp up your enthusiasm and actually take you to the next level rather than this video. This is gonna be a marketing one. So if you haven't yet, join the channel family by clicking that little subscribe button and smashing that bell icon to get all the new videos. And then uh, until next time, as always, all my contact information, including my Instagram, will be in the comment section below.